Hey folks, Dave here, and welcome to an early preview of the Early Access launch of Manor Lords. This is a survival city builder set in the Middle Ages, and there's also going to be some combat as you both protect your new settlement from brigands and from other troops from other lords, but you're also going to go out and conquer territories around the map. It's also wild that this game is mostly developed by just one guy. Shout out to Greg for his incredible work on this game. And also, of course, a big thank you for the early access as well. I've been able to get quite a few hours testing things out to see what's changed since the last public beta in 2022. And I've got some tips to help you guys get started as the game hits public early access at the end of April. As you start a new game, you can make your own custom coat of arms here in the in-game version. But you can also import a texture now. Just gonna hop over to Photoshop here real quick. You guys can see the coat of arms template. I'll upload this PNG down there uh, in the description. If you guys wanna go ahead and make yours to get ready for the game, pretty simple. I'm gonna grab a few pieces of my YouTube header artwork here and see what looks good. Got some mountains and birds. Um, <laughs> don't think my Ranger Dave with the M14 is going to fit for this game. Uh, maybe the fire. Oh, yeah, that's some good contrast there. I like that. Let's go ahead and make sure we name it the right thing. Put it in the save games folder as custom underscore coat dot PNG. Don't save it as template. Save it as just custom coat PNG. In game, just hit the load a custom texture button and boom, there it is. That looks awesome with the effects on it. Very cool. Let's dive in. We just have one early access map available to us right now. Not sure what you guys will have as it goes public, but for recording, we just have the one map. Uh, victory condition is dominance. Build and then conquer. Here's our map. Where are we? We're in Goldhort. Goldhoff. There we go, Goldhoff. We are in Goldhoff. And our rival lord is just to our north, already claiming two nearby territories. Got some decent resources. Um, got some berries and some wild animals. All regions should have those. Uh, that's your main food supplies. Rich stone deposit and just a regular iron deposit. Got a very nice stream, too. A lot of you guys watching are going to be pretty familiar with the very early game stuff, so I'm going to go through it pretty quick here. You start out with some piles of supplies on the ground, a hitching post, and a homeless camp for your settlers. Now, what I like to build, first of all, is going to be a logging camp. There's two types of wood you can log in this game. Uh, a woodcutter's lodge does firewood to keep your houses warm in the winter and keep your cooking going, all that stuff. But you need a logging camp to build basically everything in this game. And if you run out of timber with no logging camp built, well, you've just failed the game. You can actually paint yourself into a corner, uh, which I've done before several times. So first things first, as a new player and old player both, <laughs> make sure you guys build a logging camp and then you can build these really nice roads. Check out this road system. Make sure that you guys connect all of your construction and uh, your trade routes with the road tool. It's super authentic looking, but it lets your, uh, your workers actually use hand carts and oxen much faster and more efficiently when they're connected by roads. Also, as you're assigning families to certain jobs like woodcutting or logging, Make sure that you guys leave at least one family available for construction. That's that far left icon on the top taskbar. Got five people doing construction right now. Basically, all five of my families are unassigned to specific jobs, so they're all just available for the construction. That's going to change quick, and balancing who's doing what job is a big part of this game. I'm going to go ahead and get that woodcutter's lodge built as well and connect that to our road, but I'm not going to connect the homeless camp because I want that gone as soon as possible. Now, with our wood resource chain 
going, let's worry about food. We've got some berries down here. I don't want to put my berry foraging hut way out there because I have to protect it at some point. I'm going to place it up here on the hill and then just tell my workers once it's built uh, where they can find those berries if they're too far away. And again, connect with roads. Yeah, the berries are all the way down here. So I might have to actually uh, place a marker on the forager's hut so that they can find those berries. But I just don't want to have that hut down there where I can't protect it from bandits and other enemy troops. Oh, we have a letter from someone. Oh, it's our it's our rival lord. Do not judge me by the slanderous rumors. I'm going to write back and tell him that he has no claim. Oh, the game also just reminded me you should check your overlays as well. We have emmer, which is wheat fertility. It's okay. Flax, not great at all. Terrible for this region, actually. Uh, wow, same for barley. Rye is okay. And then uh, smell is okay, thankfully. That'll change soon, I'm pretty sure. Once your construction is complete, don't forget to assign families to do the jobs. So you'll see now on the top left, we now only have four families available for construction and general uh, work because one of them has been assigned just to do logging. My second important tip for you guys is get houses built as soon as possible. Honestly, even before storage for your supplies because the homelessness penalty that you get for your settlement's happiness is going to stick with you for, uh, for me it was like a year and a half on my first game and it really slowed the growth of my settlement. So get houses up quickly to prevent that homelessness uh, debuff from lasting too long. Even if you have to build those houses at the expense of some of your other much needed buildings. Just get it done. Also don't forget as you're building those houses that you can subdivide those plots into small or large ones which can help as you're doing things like adding gardens to those back lots down the road. Or if you just need the housing you can pack them in pretty tight. Before we keep building and going down my list of the top seven must know tips for getting started in this game, let's give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, longtime channel partner, Apex Gaming PCs. As usual, this video is both recorded and fully edited on my Apex Gaming PC. I just recently swapped out the 3080 Ti in it for a 4080 Super after two years, sent that 3080 off to a good home, and this thing is still screaming. Didn't touch my RAM or CPU, left them just as they were from the factory. As you guys can see, that is running this game at all 4K Ultra settings and over 60 FPS. I'm getting around between 80 and 90 FPS, but you guys are only gonna see 60 there on the recording. And of course, Minor Lords itself is going to be a PC-only title for a while as it heads through early access. So if you're looking for a PC upgrade or you don't have one and you really want to play this game, make sure you guys check out the link at the top of the description and pick yourself up an Apex Gaming PC upgrade. Even the prices now are super easy. There's no more discount codes. The price that you guys see on, for example, the Ranger Dave storefront on the Apex Gaming PC store, that's the actual ready to go discounted price. And that's true of all of the builds at all of the price points that you guys see there. The guide, the explorer, and the pioneer. The price you see is gonna be the best price you can possibly get. No more code hassle, that's pretty cool. All right, let's dive back into our build. Our next important thing on a, a pretty long list of important things all needing to kind of happen at the same time is we need to get our supplies here out of the weather before it rains and they can get damaged. So it's time to build some storehouses. You build a granary for perishables like food and you build a general storehouse. And that one's gonna store all of your general supplies like your planks and your tools. As you're building and throughout really your entire play session, keep a close eye on how many months of supplies you have on hand right here at the top. 
That's going to be firewood and food, with uh, the total number being shown there, the lowest amount available for either fuel or food. If you have a huge surplus, you can look at trading some of that away. I'll show you guys some of that later on. That'll get you some money for other projects if you're just being overrun with fuel and food. I guess this is a good time to show you guys my other suggestion for early game here. And that's going to be make good use of your plots. My burgage level plot here, level one. We've got a little bit of coin that we start with. 50 regional wealth. I'm going to spend that on a chicken coop. And we're going to use that... Uh, well... I should have done it over here in the small plot. We're going to use a big plot for a garden as well with our last 25 coin. Uh, so let's plan on a little more space somewhere for a big garden. Let's do it out of here by the logging camp. It gets raining like this and the wife when I get out of bed. It says her head hurts. I tell her maybe you didn't scream at me all the time. Wouldn't hurt. There we go, nice big plot as our villagers complain there. Oh, someone's already sick. So part of getting some chickens going is to allow us to diversify our food source. Right now we are eating literally nothing but bread. We don't have any berries coming in yet. Uh, where's our single family working on the berries? There he is. He's got a full load. So that's our first load of berries coming. Having a diversified food source is going to be really, really important to keeping sickness at bay. There we go. Hunting camp is almost done. And immediately assign him to hunting. Ah, that's a funny glitch. They've still got their shovels and they're heading out. <laughs> <laughs> the floating shovels and their arrows and bows to hunt. What do we got? Some deer, probably? Where is he? Yep. Nice big herd in here. Got our chickens going here. Utilizing these backyard chicken coops and gardens is going to help with your initial early year food supply go. and keeping disease away. So... That is my second tip for you guys. Uh, invest in chickens. Invest in the backyards of your houses. Let's make this house priority one. Oh, our storehouse is done too. Um, and we are completely out of people to assign to it. We have enough timber for now. Let's assign somebody to the storehouse instead of on timber. And then we'll get all these supplies moved inside this extra stone that needs to go in. Okay. Still have a little bit of a homeless issue going on. So let's build yet more houses. It's only two timber per plot. That's not bad. I'm just going to fill up this whole back lot area here. That'll get us three lots. And our last 25 coin for our regional wealth is going to go to... Yep, we got people here. It's going to go to our vegetable garden. Nice big plot for our garden back there. Lots of sunlight. That last house, like a set of houses, is going to take care of our homeless problem. And our approval shouldn't drop too much further. So let's just let some time go by now. Up to eight months of total supplies for food and fuel. That's looking great. Okay. Doesn't take much to keep a small village going. Hey, there we go. Our first level increase for the whole settlement. Should have some points to spend, yeah. And we got our first armament. So 
So we get our first delivery for free. Um, let's see what we have here. We have 20 large shields and 20 spears. And this is where we're going to have my next tip for you guys. And that's uh, don't neglect the militia early on. You might have incursions pretty quickly. And as you guys can see here, uh, there's a bandit camp down here with... That's a good-sized bandit camp. Look at these guys. They are loaded for bear. Um, they're going to be stealing supplies from your camp basically from the very start of the game. I haven't seen it happen yet, but it's going to happen any time now as we attract their attention. And in some of my test gameplay, I had a full bandit raid on my village that I almost didn't catch in time, and they burned down like half of it. So... This is how you raise a militia. Click on your army button, create a new unit. I've got spears and shields, so I can create a spear militia. And that's made up of my male villagers. Okay. You can also hire mercenaries if you have the coin. <laughs> I certainly do not. And if you need to rally them, you can click on their avatar right there and rally them and they'll grab their weapons and head to the rally point to defend or attack of course right now everybody is working where I want them to stay so I'll just cancel that out and that's it no more homeless this first winter really is about trying not to do too much too quickly and uh, pushing beyond your resources and letting people starve. It's not what you want. I'm going to go ahead and add some more houses to get ready for future improvements and growth. We'll do three plots there. Or three other houses right there. Let's also not forget there's our well. And this is cool. We have enough room to put a well right in town. There's a nice water supply right there under the ground in our village. That's very convenient. Let's actually make that uh, priority. Get that done. That'll make them quite happy. If you click on your houses, you can see what will make them happy. Water access and church level are their amenities. And we also need to build a market to help distribute what each family needs to the whole community so everyone needs firewood and food basically um, right now they have to kind of dig it out of the storage buildings themselves so to help with that we're gonna build a marketplace and let's put it somewhere cool um, next to the well right off the main road we'll do a nice big market here Make room for 43 stalls. There's a cool look at a completed market. And your villagers will set up the stalls automatically based on what their family is in charge of. So our firewood cutters will set up a stall and sell the firewood. Our berry gatherers will sell the berries, etc. is going to leave less people to do the gathering, so keep that in mind. But the distribution is really, really important to uh, making everybody happy and also efficient. Just like everything else, though, you need more warm bodies to do that work. Hey, our oxen is actually not doing work for once. No more construction for now, so I'm going to remove our last construction family, put them back on logging. Look at that tiny little market. Tell you what, it's time to visit our village. You can walk around in uh, third person on the ground, which is pretty cool. Does not look impressive from the ground right now, but let me tell you guys, as your settlement grows, it'll be very cool to look out on the vista that you've uh, created here. I'm kind of just in a, a big forest clearing. Not much of a vista, but it feels pretty nice. Nice and secluded. 
So there you can see that they are quite happy about the firewood and food available at the market now. They're just wishing for uh, the church level. There's no church at all right now. And there's no clothing options either. Uh, no unassigned families to guide the ox. I appreciate that warning. Uh, the last beta did not have that. There's a time period where I played like 45 real minutes of the game and couldn't figure out why nothing was happening uh, productivity wise. And it was because my oxen had no one to guide it. And so everything was just jammed up. Lots of very appreciated work in the uh, not even year and a half since the public beta. Very cool stuff here. A few more kids, but no families moving in yet because we're still pushing past that homelessness um, hit to our happiness, our approval rating. They are very happy about the market, though. Got berries, meat, and yes, our first eggs are coming in from our chicken coops. That was absolutely worth that 25 coin. And there's our first bandit theft. They stole 14 pelts. Ah, from our, probably from our storehouse. Their camp is pretty close. I mean, right down the hill there. Let's speed time up as our happiness goes up. Let's spend a resource point um, to help get us some money. One of my favorite development uh, choices here in the development tree for my town. I like the beekeeping because honey is worth quite a lot of money. So uh, as soon as we have our first extra family, I think I'm going to get them working on some beekeeping. Oh, and we can also do policies. Uh, not yet, but you can choose to, for example, make wild animals regen faster. Then your, your farm crops won't be as efficient. Those are basically just ways to customize your, uh, your gameplay style. Each one's got a, a positive and then a negative. Well, as we're waiting for time to pass, I'll also give you guys another one of my uh, most used tips, which I haven't actually used yet. That's this, the tab button. With tab, you can immediately see what your villagers' needs are. These guys really want clothing in a church. You can see empty houses, no residents in these yet. Uh, you can see unassigned buildings, like, for example, no one is cutting firewood right now at all. That is very useful. And uh, now that I've kind of shown that little shortcut, expect me to use it a whole bunch. We've got 21 months of food, so... I'm going to leave our animals alone for a bit. Let's get back to wood cutting. And get more than four months of firewood before we hit winter time. You guys head over to firewood as well. And hey, there we go. 52% approval rating. Now we have a chance of new families. And we've got houses ready for them. Winter's coming. Come on, new villagers. Move on in to Goldhof. It's time. I'm juggling some things here to get ready for bees. I know it's late in the season, but... Uh, we're going to need some planks. So I've built a, where is it, a saw pit for sawing our wood into planks. Let's get some planks going. Hey, there we go. New family has moved into our village for the first time. It only took 10 months, or uh, I guess it's 7 since March. And we have our first option to assign somebody to something new. Let's get that apiary built. I'll put it uh, back here for now. And the bandits are stealing our logs and our meat too? Okay. We're going to have to do something about them as soon as we can, I think. Well, November is definitely here. We have one more family now. Up to seven families in our small village as we are staring down winter 
right on hard doorstep. I'm not sure how useful bees are going to be this time of year. But, uh, yeah, we're getting some honey still. So our villagers are going to have uh, good allergy defense. Who's this guy? Traveling merchant? Just a wanderer. And there's our first snowstorm and another family moving in. Eight total families now. And our seasonal resources are going away. Our berries are gone. So let's um go ahead and, and just unassign our berry gathering for now. And we'll go back to hunting. Let's keep our meat coming in over the winter. We are fully in winter now, and doesn't this game just look beautiful? Nope. Oh. <laughs> As it hitches and saves. I do appreciate the five minute autosave option. I think it was 10 or 15 by default, but I'm nervous like that. Just an awesome, awesome looking game. Well, we have made it to January and no one is going to freeze or starve. In fact, people are moving in all the time. Up to nine families now. Next up, let's build a tannery to convert some of our hides from our hunting lodge into some basic clothing. That'll take care of meeting one of our settlers' specific needs that they have, and it'll increase overall happiness, and also get our growth rolling pretty good. Let's put our tannery out there. Uh, I think it's industry. Yep, tannery. And I hit help. By accident. It was extremely confusing. There we go. Um, you guys get building. Do one last logger. While I was time skipping, I also got my, um, my forester here. Wait, that's my forager. And I am really mixing these two buildings up for some reason. Uh, I meant to get my forester hut going again and tell them to work uh, right here and restore the forest. Right there, yeah, work right there. <laughs> Instead I had my forager going out in January looking for berries in a big empty part of the forest. That was an efficient use of their time. Generic storage is full. Who storage is full? Oh, the, um, the saw pit. Let's uh, empty that log out of there. Otherwise, the game's going to keep dinging me about it. There we go. <laughs> Unassign you now just to get rid of the notifications. We've got 15 months of food and fuel right now. Awesome. This is, uh, this is going well. Oh, there's the second bandit camp. No, that's the first one. Um, but yeah, they've been across the border a couple times. Let's talk a bit about mercenaries because I have not done much with them. Um, you can hire the Wayward Sons, the Battle Brothers, and the Brotherhood of the Forest? <laughs> it's Robin Hood. They wear extremely tight hosen. I might hire them. They are the most expensive. Our current militia is up to 18 thanks to our population, but I really want to have overwhelming force before I take on this camp because when you're fighting with your militia, your militia is your citizenry, and if they die, your village is going to struggle. So we have to be really, really careful. So we've got clothing taken care of. We've got food taken care of. We've got firewood good to go. Let's work on our church. Where should our church go? Across from the market? I don't know. Bandit's stealing again. This is heavier than it looks. They stole... What did they steal? Something random. Uh, T. 
is the shortcut on the keyboard to get back to your town hall, by the way. Across from the market is uh, a simple choice, but I like it. Got two families assigned to construction. Once we have the church figured out, we'll do trade next and get some money coming in. Oh. We have a band of raiders. Those, I believe, are from the other lord. And, uh, yep, there they are, coming in from the north side of, uh, which region is this? Holfstetten. That is a lot of troops, and I am right near them. Odd that they're marching in winter. Oh, he's got mercenaries. He's got the Brotherhood of the Forest. And the Battle Brothers? That's a huge army. That uh, is quite concerning. They are not too far away. Check it on my hunting here. You can actually set a limit where you don't overhunt. So my hunters are leaving 10 out of 20 for repopulation. That'll help keep that resource renewable. I need some income. Uh, my people aren't super rich. And they're pretty not happy still. <laughs> um, but I think it might be time for a tax to raise some money for some mercenaries. So this is earlier than I usually do this. I think it's time to consider uh, my manor. I need 15 stone. Okay. Ooh, there's always a requirement. Uh, Stonecutter's camp. Well, that's easy. There's... Some stone cutting right there we can do. Let's keep a close eye on that army. And I've lost them. Oh, wrong region. I swear they're heading right here. I mean, they are... They're beelining. I may not have time to uh, like raise taxes, raise a militia. We might have to just make a militia with what we have. I can hire local thugs. That's so cool that it changed when they, the other guy hired the other armies. Let's do this. Pause the stone. Forget taxes for now. <laughs> Pause the church. Forget happiness for now. We're going full defensive. Trade and trading post so we can sell off some of our honey and other food. Get some quick cash, hopefully. Where's our trading route? Oh, nice, nice. We have a trading route right here. I mean, they're they're practically here. This is not good, guys. Let's go ahead and call out the militia. We've got 20. Rally on the edge of town. They're going to gather up their weapons. And uh, just a basic overview of the controls. Basically total war style. Quite a bit of options for movement and uh, stance. And all kinds of cool stuff. But let's just go ahead and do it. In practice. Good morale, but 60% effectiveness. Yeah, another ruler's army was sighted indeed. Oh, we cut them marching. Not through our town, sirs. Oh, wait. Oh, hallelujah. They're not hostile. Okay. Okay, you guys can, can slow walk. We're going to put you right in the middle of town. So, we're not at war yet, thankfully. That is quite a show of force. Man, I was sweating. I was absolutely sweating. I was like, this is going to be a real short build. <laughs> this settlement is done for. They hired so many. I'm going to stick to my plan, though. We're going to build the trading post. Sell some of these extra resources. We have 14 months of supplies right now. Um, the market is coming along nicely, and church build just abandoned there. 
wonder where they're off to. Are they off to uh, fight the bandits, hopefully? That's a cool screenshot. Let me just grab that real quick. Look at the flags and everything. That is great looking. Not great that it's in my village, but uh, great looking, to be sure. Our villager just wandering out here. Well, I guess that's good news. So let's go ahead and disband the militia. It is March. Everyone get back to work. And we have a lot of honey to sell. We get to that point. Our forester is hard at work, too. Hey, I got the name right this time. Uh, we can now bring our foragers back, though. Uh, you guys can go back to work on the berries there. Who are they fighting? Oh, the bandits might have come out to meet them. I can't quite tell. I hear fighting in the woods. There they are. One unit is broken. Let's see some men down. Yeah, I think they're fighting the bandits. I'm all right with that. Illegitimate ruler or not. Well, it's the middle of April now. We got a bunch going on actually. New storehouse is open. I'm going to yeah, assign one family to it to move stuff into that. Our trading post is done. Assign a family to that. Trade. Let's see. What can we sell? Let's sell some planks. I want to keep, uh, keep a stock of 45 for now. It's not worth a lot. Two gold per shipment. For food, honey is worth a good amount. Let's export that. Hit export in the drop down. Um, let's keep this is eight in stock for now. Wait, export price is actually three. It's disgusting. But I need the coin. Oh, and all of our tools got stolen by bandits at some point, so we're gonna have to buy some tools probably. To do that, uh, we have to establish a route. And then pay a bunch of money. Just gross. Just gross. So all we're really exporting right now is planks. People are quite happy about the market and the food situation overall. Lots of good variety of food. Where's our granary? We've got honey, berries, eggs, and... Hopefully some vegetables, but we're not really pulling in coin with extra goods like I was hoping. Um, yeah, we gotta let some time go by here. We just need more families to be able to buy what we need. Oh, we need to bury bodies apparently. Um, so I'm gonna build a corpse pit because I'm not sure whose bodies they are. And we're gonna put it uh, out in the woods over here. Uh, corpse pits are for brigands and enemies, basically. And we'll have a graveyard at our church for our citizens and any, I guess, friendly soldiers that die. There we go, we got just enough coin. We can actually buy a new oxen, I think. We can buy it right from the hitching post. Don't have to buy the livestock trader just yet. We can order it there. Two oxen this early should be a big help. Oh, it looks like we have to have a second hitching post. Otherwise, that oxen can run away. We'll need to lift this beam to the roof. So we'll make that high priority. So we don't lose our 20 bucks. I've skipped ahead time to midsummer of our year two here. It is, I think, actually close to the end of July. 
Got a bunch of new houses in place. Our stonecutter camp is finished. And our corpse pit is also finished. And uh, our grave digger is just kind of hanging out. So I don't think any of the corpses were of the bandits. He's been assigned to that for a while. So we'll unassign them. Put them on some stone cutting. I think the corpses might have been for friendly soldiers that deserve a good Christian burial. At least that's my guess. I don't see them in the woods anymore. Maybe they're already gone. But uh, we'll have the church here soon. Make that high priority. And our grave digger from the church will take care of any bodies left. Our approval, even with possible bodies in the forest, is quite high. Which is nice. Got uh, how many families now? Up to 14. Look at all these spare construction workers. We're exporting a little bit of planks. Things are looking pretty good. 92 regional wealth. Let's spend a little bit of that. I'll give these guys some more chickens. Sutil. 50 gold total there. But man, the uh, the eggs are just a great supplement to the food that your villagers get. I want to get some more garden plots going, too. Let's do a, a couple really big plots here. According to the devs, the garden plots that are bigger uh, do actually take... Whoa! Save zoom again there as it hangs. Uh, the garden plots that are bigger do take more time away from your villagers' main job for them to tend to their home garden. So it's not like a free resource. It does cost you labor and time. So this garden plot is probably ridiculously big. I mean, look how big their backyard is. Living large like an actual manor lord. And uh, I still don't have my manor built. Should get some stone in pretty soon. Then we'll have that option. I don't know where to put it though. It's a pretty flat spot unless you're down here. But it's going to be hard to protect anything down there. I don't know. Maybe I'll... Uh cut some of those trees for a nice view into the valley. I kind of like that idea. Can I move this logging camp? Oh, I can. That's funny. I'm going to move it over there. <laughs> Clear cut some trees and I'll put my manor house right there on the crest of the hill. The nice fortified wall around it for my protection. And my village has my militia. Oh, that Bennett camp is gone. Man, feeling kind of emasculated here. A rival king, a rival lord, that is, marches his troops through my village, takes out the bandits that are harassing my town. It's going to be on me, I think, to take out this camp. Wait. Yeah, it's a bandit camp. Okay, where are the bandits? I don't see them. I think when winter hits and we run out of things to do uh, for some of the villagers, we'll go ahead and march on that bandit camp then. Ooh, that's a nice change coming in. Okay. And our church is ready. We can change the sound, too. Go with that one for now. <laughs> Just for fun. Look at that. Timber is kind of low. And look at that. All of the needs met. And we can actually upgrade these houses to level 2. We need some more fuel soon. Um... Get the woodcutters going again. 
Which houses should be the first upgrade? Obviously the fancy house here with a giant garden. We'll upgrade and then expand the living space after that. Upgrade two, level two. I totally missed this. They generate wealth per family per month. But they have additional needs as far as food goes, I believe, and fuel. We'll be okay there. Guys, keep on building. And there's our first level two house. Gonna immediately expand that. So they require a stone church, a tavern with ale, and they would like cloaks and, oh, imagine that, they want shoes. Needy, needy, needy. Here we go. Another settlement boost. Another development point, and I've paused our stonecutter camp because we already have almost 200 stone uh, in stock. That's going to last us for quite a while, and we don't want to run that mine dry. Go ahead and do charcoal burning. Get us on the industrial track here. I really want trapping too, though. Enables hunters to skillfully lay traps in the forest, which gives a passive income of meat. Very cool. Unlimited meat supply. Let's go ahead and build that charcoal kiln. Turns firewood into two charcoal, making refueling twice as efficient. Works for me. On the border of the town, though, please. Oh, looks like I'm a little late on the bandit raid because, oh yeah, Zwei is being claimed by the other king. He already killed off all the bandits. Okay, you may resolve this on the battlefield. We've got money for mercenaries. Okay. Hmm, we might fight this one, guys. I'm going to interrupt myself right there because I've made one crucial mistake. You cannot hire mercenaries with your regional wealth. It has to be your own personal treasury. There's ways to transfer that money, but it requires actually building your manor. So I accidentally went to war with no ability to hire those mercenaries. We have declared war. No, this is them. Okay, they're coming at me. Yeah, they're red. There they are. Let's earn some more money. Where's my beekeepers? Get that honey flowing. Oh, no. I can only pay them from my personal treasury. Oh, no. Yeah, it did not go well. To arms, to arms. In fact, it went really, really badly. Oh no. And then it got worse. Oh, I can't surrender. It's locked in early access. I've got brigands in the hills. Can't use King's favor. I can't change the battlefield. And there they go. Battle lost. And then it got worse. Uh oh. The brigands are here. Militia rally. I need a minimum of five. No. No. The downtown. <laughs> All of our farm fields. So, I have now loaded back a save game about 40 minutes backwards. Uh, thankfully, I did save before I declared that war. And it looks like the claim is being made for Zueyu. Down to my south again, and this time I'm just going to let it go because I am in no position to do anything about it yet. Instead, 
we're going to work on building our manor because that's how we get some actual uh, steady income going. Show you guys how the manor system works. Oh, am I low on logs? First, let's get all of our timbering going. In fact, I'm going to rebuild this logging camp back here. There we go. We've got some new houses going in. Quite a few new families. Timber is still low, but uh, as we head into the dead of winter here, uh, things are looking a whole lot better than they were in the alternate timeline, that's for sure. And we're very close to being able to build our actual manor. Oh, you guys need... Expanded living space, level two, and also two gardens for you. Oops, wrong button. You get the expanded living space first. You guys get level two. I keep spending all of our timber. <laughs> There's always 500 things to build at once, guys. Um, the logging camp down here, I'm going to assign a permanent oxen. And then uh, all these camps are going to get full workers. And then where's our stable we built? Our small stable. One more ox, please. Look at that small, nice little stable. Let's do that here, too. Upgrade with the planks. We'll spend some of that money on oxen so we can really kick things into high gear here as all my settlers zoom around on fast forward already in high gear. I want to have more militia footmen, pole arms, archers, archers need. Oh, just bows. OK. I'm going to raise footmen as well. They need swords and the small shields. Okay. So we're going to begin trading for... We'll do war bows first. got to purchase a trade route first. That'll cost us 30 gold. Establish the trade route. Import. I want to have 20 war bows at 15 coin each. For armor... Wait, do we have an attack happening? Church bell is going crazy. Also, our treasury just got drained by those bows. Um, I don't see an attack. Easy mountain. Look at the map. Nope, no brigands nearby. We're okay. What was I doing? Uh, armor. What is it called? Gambesons. We can trade for those. Um, we can't afford the trade route now, though. We spent all of our money on bows. Game lessons, yeah. That route's going to cost us 72 gold. And we have plenty of timber, so let's show you guys how the manor building works. And then I think we'll call it for this first episode. It's gone on quite a while, and I think I've covered all the intro stuff, including uh, how not to... Declare war while being unable to pay for your army. Would not recommend that at all. As planned, I'm going to put my manor on the hill here. Go to administration, manor. Angle it nicely downhill like that. This is the castle planner. Ooh, look at that view. Okay. First thing you want to put down are the roads because the game auto adds the gates under the roads so here we are walls and gates do a I'll do a longer outer wall like that good there 
Yeah, we're going to want a lot more planks. And for now, we're going to do uh, see an outer tower like that. An outer tower like that. A tax office for the looks. Because that's cosmetic only right now. Under rework. And a large garrison tower. Which will increase my retinue size. My retinue are my actual trained knights under my lordship as compared to the militia. So I need 79 planks now and 41 logs. Go to my trade here and make sure I'm not selling too much. Yep, let's keep 100 planks in stock, please. Can't sell the raw logs. So I'm good there. Just need to get some of these in storage. As we're gathering supplies for our manor, let's look at our fertility again. Yeah, I'm going to look at doing uh, some farmland back here. So farming, let's do a field. Needs to be very big. And then uh, we're going to have to have a farmhouse. Ooh. Not great crops. Yeah, man, our, uh, our fertility in this region is really not good. Wait, wait, wait. Up here could be. Next to the graveyard. Still not great. 44% for both of those. Oh, Vanda Raider scene. Wait, where? Where? Okay, so we have Raiders in our territory somewhere. I just can't see them yet. I'm going to get ready to call out some militia here. We'll do bows and spearmen. I was trying to create a second unit of spearmen, but instead it split the weapons that we had across two smaller units, so that's what we have to work with. Where is it? Oh, there they are. Okay. Bowmen. Rally. Spearmen. Rally. Spearmen. Rally. Now here's a fight. I think we could actually win. We'll keep this unit in reserve. It did split our spearmen that were available by in two. Try to head them off before they can burn stuff down. There they go. They're getting peppered with arrows. Engage. Hold in behind them. Nice, right in the back. All right, archers, redirect, redirect. Oh, they weren't expecting that. Two of them went down immediately. Oh, they're backing off some. You spear militia, stand your ground. Defense is doubled. You guys just gotta hold the line. These guys clean up the first group. All oh, their archers just got a whole bunch of them. They're gonna break. Might break. They're picking them off in the back. <laughs> A new family started moving in mid-battle. Hopefully that's all we're dealing with here. All 
Alright, soften up this unit too. Fire over my guys' heads. Do you have the solution? Fire! There we go. Right in the back. Get him. Ah, okay, so we can turn on friendly fire mode. We had the default stance there. Well, we broke him. That was a lot of fun. That was so cool. Gonna have to activate the body pit again. What a mess. What a mess. Warm up. I think we've won the day here, guys. She comes through just hauling. What is that meat? I don't even know. We can just ban the militia. Everyone get back to work. They change clothes instantly back into the farmer hats. Still carrying their bows though. Summer's coming soon. Soon. Bodies just in the middle of the street still. That was a very, very fun fight. But uh, it took longer to win that than I thought. Those brigands were not any kind of joke. Well, let's reopen the body pit. Corpse pit there. Get those buried. And I don't know if we actually lost anybody on our guys' uh, side. Maybe a couple. I think a couple. Yeah, I see some down shields. We lost a few. Uh, we have one extra war bow. Oh, we have retinue we can rally now. Thanks to our manor. We can customize them too. Oh. This is very cool. I can personalize them too. No accessories. I think we have to pay money for those. Oh yeah, we have to buy a lot of upgrades here. Well, they apparently finished working on our manor. Base manor, at least. During all that fighting. Don't have enough planks to build it yet. That's where we'll end, if we can ever get there, is building our castle. So, taxes. We'll do a 12% uh, land tax. And we'll do 10% tithe. Is there a way to transfer money to? War tax. Ah, we can do a war tax if we declare war and uh, are in a state of war. And that'll get us money right out of the town's purse. The regional wealth there. That's the missing piece. Well. It's almost the end of March. We have no actual farm field yet or farmhouse there we go once that's going we'll try and do some farming that'll get us to where we can do our windmill and our communal oven get some bread going and these guys are really wanting a tavern too there we go enough level two plots to Upgrade again for our town. We are now a large village. And we can access deep mining and keep that mine going full time. Have to build a new mine, possibly. Ah, so that only counts for the mines themselves. Not the stone cutting. Interesting thing to keep in mind. 
we'll go ahead and start working on that mining pit so we have a good source of income for trade. All right, our new mining pit is open. Unfortunately, just downhill from my beautiful home. We'll just keep those trees right there, right? Let's make sure we have plenty of families assigned to it. We're up to 33 level one families and seven level two. Let's get ready to sell some ore on the market. Can we sell ore? So we're gonna have to set up a refinery process and process that or into something more useful to sell. No, we can sell it raw. Um, how much is it worth? Three. We'll put our stocks at 25. It probably would be worth it to make iron slabs to sell. We also have to make more tools at some point because the bandits at the beginning stole all of our tools. Yeah, so we have the charcoal kiln going. We could definitely do... Yeah, we could convert the iron ore into iron slabs. I want that kiln going anyway. Um... Alright, logging camp, slow down. Is it time, guys? Is it finally time to become a manor lord here and build our manor? It is. Look at all those beautiful towers. I wanted all the towers from the start, in case you couldn't tell. Commit. And, uh, of course, we have no construction workers because they're all working the mines now. <laughs> could use more fuel for the winter, so let's keep an eye on that. These fields are also going super slow. Sowing is still in progress and it's June. Still plowing up here on our barley. That's going to do very poorly. There they go. I love how the map shows your settlement growing to our body pit out here. We're making our mark already. Hey, you guys want to clear that group of trees out, maybe? Array shrubbery. Oh, I can do that. Nice. Now that's a view. And there it is at long last. The manor is complete on this beautiful summer day. That's the ending shot right there, guys. This is Manor Lords. It's been like a five hour session of testing this game out and playing it, and I have loved it. But I'm pretty tired, so I'm gonna call it there. I wanna keep playing though. I'll save it for the recording, I'll be good. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this with me. I hope those tips at the start were useful. Subscribe if you guys wanna see more of this, and let me know in the comments because, uh, yeah, we're overdue for some strategy time here on the channel. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.